If you're anything like me and Marty, you are sick of filthy turbochargers choking down the purity of your beautiful, naturally aspirated engine, just like we... What? No. No, mate. What? No. Are you sick of turbochargers? No. But NA is good too. Is it? Well, yeah. Who yeah. loves making power with an NA engine? Honda owners. <laughs> Who loves the sound of a BRZ? Toyota Anyone? owners. Anyone? <laughs> Today, we're going to learn how to make power with a naturally aspirated engine. We're making some serious bulk cow powers. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Now, if you checked out our last BRZ video, we installed headers because the comments said, stick some headers on there and you'll make some power. How much power, we don't know, we're gonna find out, but making power with turbo cars seems to be fairly easy. Upgrade some stuff, wind up the boost, adjust the timing, page it up, and welcome to welcome to the good source, Martin. Exactly, so headers are no good. Well, I'm gonna, no, headers are good. Headers are better if you retune the engine to take advantage of that extra flow that you can achieve. How much extra? Today we're gonna to find out. We're gonna do a bunch of comparisons. We're gonna get some stock, naturally aspirated power. Then we're gonna get some exhaust headers power. Then we're gonna do some tuning cow powers. We're gonna be spraying milk all over your face. We're gonna be learning, Martin. We're gonna learn how to milk the cow of naturally aspirated purity. Put that in a comment. <laughs> or something. I'm pretty excited. Can you tell I'm I can excited? Tell. Yeah, I can because tell. it's time to release the purity, Martin. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to release the purity. We're going to learn how to make power with a naturally aspirated engine. And we're going to teach our friends how to make power with their naturally aspirated engines. Then we're going to sell this shit and get back into our turbocharged cars. <laughs> page up, page up, page up. But first, we did install this exhaust on the floor. And I'm pretty sure there's an exhaust leak. So, Martin, we're going to commit the ultimate anti-purity sacrilege, we're going to your house to use the hoist. Yeah, I've got a hoist for your back. <laughs> They're amazing. After installing our exhaust last time, we soon realised that we had a massive exhaust leak. With the car up on the hoist, we found the culprit and with a new properly sized gasket, we can tighten it back up again. With that quick fix done, now we need to investigate if our ECU has been tuned or locked from a previous install of an aftermarket program. So we have installed our full exhaust system on the BRZ, including the headers, and now it's time to tune it. Now we've got Tyler here. How you doing, mate? Good to see yeah, you. Mate, how you going? Uh, he's from PVS. They tune BRZs and 86s, sure yep. amongst other things. And so before we go down to the dyno to actually see what kind of hectic gains we've got, we thought it would probably be prudent to see if there is some software on here because the guy that sold me the car, uh, he did tell me that it was stock. Uh, but I've since met a bunch of people at a racetrack that are like, I bought the thing off that car and I bought that, so I don't think it is. So, Tyler, what do we do now? Basically, we just got to plug into the OBD and uh, yeah, just read what software we think's in. If it's got various couple of different uh, types of software, we'll basically give us an idea. Once we've done that, we can bang it on the dyno and press on. The reason we did this video is I read in the YouTube comments of a previous video, everyone's like, there's a torque dip, there's a torque dip, there's a... Yeah. Did, is the torque dip the, thing real the, or is that just people with no, slow cars trying to no, justify it? No, it is a real thing. It's okay. not a, yeah, it's not something out of um The comments land. were right. So they were. Uh, certain headers can reduce it. Uh, you never fully get rid of it, 100%, but um, yeah, certain headers like unequal length tend to make it a bit better, yep. but they're not quite as good at the top end. And then equal length, you still get a torque dip, but they're better at the top end. So they probably be the torque dip should be better in that three to 4,000 RPM range. Okay, you cool. might lose a little bit of top end, but um, that's my job. So Let's jump in. Let's right, see what done. we got, mate. Right, we'll see how we go. Now it's simply going to be a process of elimination to see if there is any existing performance software on the car. So far, it looks like the ECO is pretty clean. So yeah, it could be one of two things now. So we'll check for um, BRZ Edit or an open flash tablet. But I dare say it's probably uh, 
uh, BRZ edit should should be all right to tune this thing. Okay, out. is it possible that the previous owner put headers on but didn't do a tune? Like, Definitely. are they going to uh, and will, they'll still get gains from that without yep. adjusting the yep. tune? Yeah, generally you do. You can you can bolt anything on these things and you'll always get a bit of a gain, okay. but you just maximise it by tuning. So we've checked that we can actually write some data to the ECU, which means now we can head to the dyno and do some test runs and do some pulls and then put a tune on it and see how much power we can make. How much power are we gonna make and how is the power made on the naturally aspirated Purity engines, Martin? How is it made? We're gonna go from 103 kilowatts to 122.7 kilowatts. Is that your guess? Yeah, it's my guess. And we're gonna do that by leaning out the top end um, because these cars we know make bulk power up the top on the track like when you're just between five and seven thousand RPM it moves like well, it's fast. Bulk is a that's an exaggeration. It's funny. I'm sorry but at that point on a racetrack it's a far it's a fast car. Feel the acceleration Martin. Well that's foot to the floor. Yeah. But you can feel it start to come in up there yeah, but that's exactly. it we don't have a tune. So yet. it's all about it's all about breathing like you know getting the getting the revs getting the revs and getting and getting the fuel and air in there and we're going to reduce a little bit amount of fuel to actually make it um, make more power and we're going to go from 106 kilowatts at the wheels to 130 whoa that's, that's my guess jump. that's a that's big my jump. guess it's like 20 22 and a half percent power increase man which seems like a lot for a naturally aspirated car but just listen to the raw man The traction light came on. That's not a bad thing. I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, come with us. Let's learn how to make power on cars that are slow. <laughs> that no one likes except for journalists and the people who own them, including me, and I'm not a journalist. Tyler has invited us down to his shop, PVS in Parramatta, and it looks like we've come to the right place. As a former V8 Supercars race driver, there's a solid focus here on getting the most out of cars from brakes and suspension through to engine rebuilds, turbocharging, dyno runs and prepping cars for race and track. Next up, we're loading my BRZ onto the hub dyno so we can get ready for some power runs. But first, and the most important question of this video, is how do you make more power with a naturally aspirated engine? Pretty good place to start, exhaust, uh, nice, good set of headers, exhaust, especially on these particular cars. They really respond to it. Um, good tune, if it's a newer car, you can play around with cam timing and ignition timing and all that sort of stuff. And it gives you, generally it cleans everything up, get your fuel nice, and it'll just generally make more power. So best bang for buck for a naturally aspirated car is gonna be exhaust? exhaust. Yep. 100%. And tune. Yep. Now, lots of people are always faffing on about intakes and stuff, but there's lots of controversy around that because people aren't really making as much power as some manufacturers claim. What's the deal with that? My experience, look, Commodores seem to respond to a, a, a better intake or your, your V8s and things like that. I've found, honestly, with these, they can make a little bit of a difference, but in all honesty, all my testing is I haven't found a big, a great deal. Today, we've got a full engine back exhaust, performance headers, unequal length, over pipe, centre pipe, all the way back, what is the plan today to get some more power out of the BRZ? Plan is to do, we'll do a base run just to see where it's at, and then we'll, um, yeah, do a little bit of tuning and just play around just to try and get our cam timing nice and our uh, ignition timing sort of a little bit closer to that, that edge, I guess, because that's where you can get a bit of a gain. And just try to get our fuel a bit nice too, because they sometimes run a little rich when they're standard. So. Okay, cool. So basically the figures that we're going to have to play with today is there's going to be some pre-recorded stock figures of BRZs because this has got an exhaust on it now. So we're going to be able to make some comparative um, judgments based on a completely stock car, then a stock tune with headers and exhaust, and then a performance tune with headers and exhaust. Let's get That's into it. it. All right, I'm let's pumped. go. Let's no worries. What do these cars make totally stock, stock everything, like 100-ish? Yeah, look, dynos vary. Hub dynos characteristically run slightly higher because there is no slippage, so you get a, a proper, a bit more of an accurate result. Yep. Um, but normally I see anywhere from, I've seen anywhere from 100 to 110 stock. So 
little bit wavy, but yep. we've got about 117. Yeah, cool. Um, okay. About 180 newton meters. It's as you can see the well the when you have a look at it the the power curve is a little bit wavy, but um, yeah. But again, it's more than standard generally. Yeah. So and I'll show you a full stock one that we've done later. So pretty repeatable. Yep. Bang on. So 117 so. kilowatts at the wheels, which yep. is uh, probably around maybe 10 to 12 more than a stock car. Yeah, uh, and they do vary from car to car, kilometres and all the rest of it, how many miles the car's got on it. So um, you're going to get a slight variance, but it's definitely better than standard. Def at the top Perfect. end, they're heaps better. Great. So that's approximately what you're going to get. And now we now we drop in a tune. That's it. Now we start tuning and uh, might take a, a few goes to fine tune it. But yeah, we should be able to get a gain straight away. Alrighty, so we've put in a tune. Yep. The car is up to temperature again. And now we've got a tune in there. We're just going to run it up and see what kind of cow powers we can make. We we'll might have to do a couple of little revisions on this one just to make sure our fuel number's pretty right. But apart from that, we'll give it a crack. Awesome. BRZ powers, let's do it. That's all right, here we go. Pretty that's pretty good actually, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's really good. That's amazing. That's better than I thought. <laughs> that's good. Feel, feels 133 nice. kilowatts. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's really good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, Done. Hit the 200 newton meter Thanks mark. for watching this episode of Mighty Car Mods. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Are we calling that done? No. It, does I'll, everything look good? I'll, it's, I'll, I'll like I'm a bit fussy, so I'll, I'll see if I can make the fuel, but the fuel looks really good. Yeah, right. So well, wow, there's some hectic gains. Mm. You're going to be, um, how many seconds are we going to get out of you now? Well, I was, on, I was on 158 last time, and I got to like 195 k's an hour down the straight. I might hit 200 now. Yeah, I reckon you'd be pretty close. I'm going to need that to catch the to catch Marty's STI. So just having a look at the screen over here, and we can get some comparison now between what the curve looks like on a stock car versus stock with an exhaust, and now our tune. Yep. This is the famous torque dip that everyone speaks about. That's basically a standard car with stock exhaust and everything. Um, so yeah, the torque is pretty standard. Some are worse than others, but as you can see, it is pretty similar. It's pretty prominent, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, pretty prominent. This one, honestly, I thought the headers, unequal lengths generally don't make as much top end, but it's still made a bit of a gain in the mid-range without touching it. Yeah. So you can see the exhaust works, but as you see, when you tune it, you can tune the torque dip out to a point with the, um, yeah, just by tuning it with the cam timing and ignition timing, what have you, and obviously it just, you make it breathe better at the top end yeah. just by tuning it out of it. And it does make a, in this case, a pretty noticeable difference. And even though we've still got a little bit of a ski run, it's yes. not nearly as humpy as it was before. No. It's kind of, you know, like we've still got Definitely. a bit of a sine wave here, but we don't have these massive dips and gullies. Turbo power curves are a little bit smoother, yeah. um, I find, with the normally aspirated. Remember, they're, they're eight injectors, so there is a slight injector crossover and you get a few little anomalies. But generally speaking, you don't feel them too much at all. Honestly, you, you wouldn't even feel them. Once it's sort of four grand, four and a half, you, you'll sing all the way to seven and a half. Well, mate, that was so educational today and so so good to get. I'm, I'm just shocked that naturally aspirated car can make that much power with an exhaust, like with headers and a tune. Makes a big and difference. And people could buy some headers for six or 700 bucks, yep. do a tune for potentially a similar price, depending yep. on how it's done, and you're making 30% of power for yep. one and a half grand. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, no, it's really good. And then Far when you out. turbo them, that scale just goes again. Do so. it, do it, do it. <laughs> But you, you don't, day, you don't recommend turbocharging these, do you? No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> lies. All lies. Turbos are filthy, aren't they? Because they actually inhibit the true, pure sound of a naturally That's aspirated right. engine. That's what right. Are you I was trying say? to explain that to Marty on the way here, and he was like, no, nah, but it's, it's that pure slowness that I think makes the, the driving experience so real, right? It'll make... You don't have to... You don't have to play... Just... What do you... Sounds like someone that it. is trying to convince himself to not go turbo. But look, I tell you what, we'll get you going faster with the around the track with the stock engine, get your driving maximum, then when you hit the turbo, you'll be, you'll be super. Science. Perfect. 
for science. Mate, thank you so no much. Worries, mate. That was amazing. Not a problem. Everybody, that's another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for PVS for having us down here today in their dyno. Thank you to Martin for hanging with me. If you want to support the show, of course, we've got Mighty Car Mods merch. We ship it anywhere in the world. You can get that from MightyCarMods.com. We're now going to get into our massively powered, naturally aspirated BRZ, no filthy turbo, and go and get ourselves some mad lunch. Go get ourselves some burgers of some kind. They're good burgers around here. Kebabs. We're in Parramatta. Oh, yeah. It's time to get kebabs. We're, we're in Parramatta. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.